just about ready to go. Thank you so much. I'm excited to be here today. I really am. So let's just launch right in. Of the 17% of startups that have a female founder, only 7% of startups have a female founder. Yet research shows that companies with diverse leadership teams are 21% more likely to have ability to outperform their competitors. It's so important to have that diversity. Today, there's a $2 trillion opportunity gap for women in the tech sector. That is the estimated amount of economic value that's lost due to underrepresentation and underutilization of women's talents and skills. Empowering women in tech isn't just about equality. Absolutely not. It's about unleashing the full potential of innovation. Companies with more women in leadership achieve 34% higher returns on investment. Yet only 27% of tech leadership positions are held by women globally. This means the opportunity ahead of us is tremendous. It's time to shatter glass ceilings. It's time to unleash the fearless roar of female leadership and cultivate a culture of courage that fuels innovation in the tech industry. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you're joining us today. My name is Lakeisha Gunter, and I am so excited to be with you today to talk about how to fear less and roar more. I'm gonna share some strategies of overcoming fear and embracing courage to achieve your wildest dreams. So let's just launch right in. We know for certain that, if I can get things moving here, I'm so sorry, slight challenge. My slides are not progressing. I love technology. Okay, let's see if we can get it moving. All right, there we go. Just a mild snafu this morning. What I wanna start off by saying is, our bodies and brains are wired for fear. We know that fear is a common current that runs through all of our lives, but we know that if we let it, fear can keep us locked up in the prison of the comfortable and predictable, and that's gonna prevent us from achieving our true potential. We don't want that to be the case. I know for me, just when I'm about to say yes to opportunity, that little voice in my head says, you're gonna fail spectacularly, Lakeisha. You, you're gonna be humiliated and rejected. You are a total imposter. Or I may, it may say you are not enough. You are unworthy. You don't deserve a seat at this table. You have no power. These are the voices that speak to me in my deepest, darkest moments of fear. Now, is it just me? Or do any of you hear these crazy voices like I do as well? I'd say so. Most of us probably have heard these voices one time or not. So what I'd like for us to do is to just take a minute and in the chat, write one thing that you would do if you were not afraid. Hopefully you guys, um, I can see your chat. Let's see. So take a minute and tell me one thing that you would do if you were not afraid. I'm not seeing the chat yet but I'll wait a few seconds. Oh, I got it, now I see it. Quit my job and start my own business, feeding people, write a book. Ask for a seat on the strategy team. Ask for a promotion. I'm loving it, ladies. Absolutely. Start my own consulting business. Absolutely. There's so many things that we all would like to be able to do. Um, so much impact we want to make, right? Opportunity to start our own business. Opportunity to maybe spend more time with family, launch a company, start a food truck, take a sabbatical, swim with sharks in Australia. These are some of the amazing comments that I'm seeing in chat. Absolutely. I love it. I love it. I love it. Now, we, we have these things, so don't forget those because we're going to come back to those. We know that experiencing fear um, is a prerequisite to any positive change that we want to see in our lives. It really is. But I want you to remember one thing. Fear is an emotion. And emotions are data, not direction. So don't let your emotions outweigh your intelligence, all right? It is truly time for us to transform how we absolutely see ourselves and how we actually view fear. We, it's time to transform our relationship with fear. Let's make sure we're doing that. 
All righty, perfect. But what is fear? Fear is false evidence appearing real. It's not real. It's just something that it's in our minds in so many ways. We want to make sure that we can move past that. You know, I want to propose something today. What if fear is not a police siren or an ambulance in our minds? What if we decide that fear is an ice cream truck sign? siren. And we all love ice cream, right? So we can begin to fear less by drowning out the negative voices in our mind, in our head, with a narrative that actually reminds us who we are and what the prize is on the other side of fear. Because at the end of the day, most of our fears, they don't even come to pass. They are false evidence appearing real. So we want to be able to render fear powerless. That is what we want to do. Because that's one thing that we know that at times fear can begin to try to hold us back. But we have to look fear directly in the eyes and say, hello, I see you. We want to acknowledge that fear, move past it, feel it, use it, but operate through it. Fear isn't an obstacle. It's truly an opportunity. It's an opportunity for us to uncover the next best thing on our path to achieve our dreams and goals. I will say this. If you want to live your best life now, allow yourself to experience more fear. I know it's counterintuitive, but begin to experience things that, that, maybe fe- that, that you become afraid of. But you know what? When you do that, you open yourself up to the unknown and it can be mind blowing. So what am I saying today? Invest in the things that you fear. Focus on mastering that fear because it's time to face everything and rise. We know that a made up mind removes doubt and fear and you become resolute. And we have the best example of that with Rosa Parks. She would not be denied. Rosa said, I am not giving up my seat on that bus. She said, I will not move ever again. So when you make up your mind, it removes the doubt. It removes the fear. You become resolute. And you know what? You take action. So let's make sure that we're doing the exact same thing. I want to tell a little bit about my journey and my journey and where I started. I, my journey began in a small town in Florida. Our claim to fame is that we're just a short drive from Walt Disney World and all the theme parks. And we believe we have the best oranges in the state of Florida. No doubt about it. We have the best oranges. You know, I was raised by a strong and equally amazing single mom of three. My mom had a heart of pure gold. I had supportive grandparents, strong family, and a king that looked after its own. I was surrounded by family, faith, and lots of love. My mom instilled in me the value of hard work. She set an example of how to be tenacious, how to be vigilant, how to persevere in the face of adversity. She role modeled not allowing challenges or circumstances in her life to really derail her from what was important to her. She made sure we knew that whatever those circumstances were, that they would not dictate her life and they would not dictate mine. I really love that about my mom. Early on in my life, I discovered I had a strong love for computers. You see my first computer on the screen there. I desperately wanted a computer, but I knew that this expense would be really challenging for my mom as she was raising three girls on one income. I was hesitant to ask, But I did, and like most moms, what did she do? She worked extra shifts to make it happen. At Christmas that year, I got my first computer, a Commodore 64. My mom truly was my biggest cheerleader, and she never missed an opportunity to show me. She always invested in me, making sure I had the right tools, resources to achieve my dreams and goals. I learned in life that you miss all the shots you don't take, right? So I overcame my fear. I shot my shot with my mom. And I asked for the computer and that truly changed my life. There's no doubt in my mind that we absolutely can overcome fear and we can do that by cultivating courage. Let's make sure we do that. So let's talk about how we can actually overcome our fear and cultivate courage. I'm going to share with you four antidotes to fear that have worked for me. Let's walk through those. The first is create a growth mindset. It's important that we do that. We also want to make sure that you're starting to build a strong network of support. And the other thing that I want to highlight that I think is super important for us, especially in the tech field, is practice resilience. We know that things constantly change. And how do we put ourselves in a position to make bold, bold decisions? So let's start with creating a growth mindset. I want to talk to you about one of my mentors and sponsors, Sandra Rivera. Sandra often shared great advice with me because anytime I made a phone call or sent a note and said, hey, I need a little bit of your your um, phenomenal thinking as I, as I tackle some challenges ahead of me. And the answer was always yes. But one of the times I had an opportunity to speak with Sandra, she shared this perspective with me. She said, Lakeisha, I have completely refrained failure in my mind. And I say to myself, I never lose 
I either win or I learn. How powerful is that? I never lose. I either win or I learn. When I think about this, it truly helps me to see that there's always something good on the other side of trying, even if I don't get the desired outcome that I'm looking for. I know in the end, I'm going to learn something in the process, and I can take those learnings forward to make sure that I can be successful in the future. So being fearless doesn't mean you don't have fear. It just means you push through the fear to try to achieve something greater. We have to prepare for success. And to do that, it's important to collect data, to get inputs from experts, and get feedback from the people you trust. So you can't let fears hold you back from achieving more. I want to share with you an example of how I actually almost let fear keep me from achieving something amazing. A few years back, I was presented with an opportunity to become the technical assistant and chief of staff to Intel CEO at the time, which was Brian Krasanich. I remember when the person reached out to me and said, hey, I think you should apply for BK's TA role. I was like, you do? Me? Immediately doubt and fear crept in. Those voices started, that tape started going in my head again, you know, saying, you know, you will never, ever even get past the screening process, Lakeisha. One voice said, you aren't qualified. And even if you do get the job, are you truly going to be a full partner? Will you be able to sit at the table with the rest of the leaders? And I thought, you know what, you idiot. Of course, you're going to be able to sit at the table. Of course, you're you're the right candidate for this job. Of course, you should apply. And that's what I did. I put my name in the hat because what I know for sure is that fear is temporary, but regret is forever. And I did not want to regret that I didn't even shoot my shot, as I said earlier. So I put fear aside. I said, get out of here. And I began to devise a strategy to win. You know, fear is really a call to action. And that action is courage. Of course, I got the role. The rest, as they say, is history. It was one of the most amazing opportunities I had um, supporting Brian Grzanich and the leadership team at Intel. And I love this quote by Oprah. It just says, think like a queen. We're all queens. And it says, a queen is not afraid to fail. Failure is another stepping stone to greatness. So make sure you put yourself out there, move towards the things that maybe scare you the most. All right, let's talk about the second antidote to fear. And that is around building a network. Let's look at building a strong network. All righty. Let's see. Building a strong network. My slide moved in a different direction. Let's talk about the importance of building your network. At times, it can feel like, you know, when you're putting those networks together, that you're kind of on a high wire out there by yourself. But you're not. It's so important to make sure that you begin to build those key relationships, building that team of, of, of advisors, that team that can support you, that can give you the insight that you need as you navigate life both personally and professionally. And as I said, many times it can be scary. But what I love about this image is that the network is truly the net below you that gives you the confidence to step out onto that higher wire of life. So my question to you is who is in your network? Who's on your team today? Let's make sure that you're out there and you're building out that team of people that can help you be successful. See, we know relationships determine the direction of your future. And so what I've done is I've been intentional about cultivating a team of people that can give me feedback, that can provide coaching, great advice. The other thing that's super important to me is sometimes I can only see, you know, maybe a few steps in front of me, but there's others who be, can help me maybe a vision, a bigger dream, a bigger future for myself. So. As I look at this picture, what I can tell you is that many times I've called on this network and I've said, hey, I've got some questions on this particular item. I love your perspective. Or maybe when that fear and doubt creeps up and I'm afraid to even apply for that next opportunity. These people inspire me. They've been strong examples of grace, of power. They positively impacted my life. Um, And many times they've been my accomplice when I've been trying to uh, make something happen. Uh, and, and also they wear my t-shirt when I'm not in the room. Like, so who's wearing your t-shirt when you're not in the room? Who's advocating for you when you're looking at that next opportunity? This is my team, Lakeisha, as I call them. They're my squad, my personal board of advisors. Make sure that you are intentionally building your network. Okay. It's super important. So let's, let's look at the next antidote to fear. It's around practicing resilience. It's super important that we practice resilience. Let's talk a little bit about that. What does that really mean? It means that you are putting yourself in position to actually have a strong, supportive environment that allows you to grow. It's really important as leaders that we build this resiliency, cultivating that supportive network that we just talked about, being optimistic, being adaptable, 
practicing self-care. I know we're not always super good at that. I know I'm not. Um, having high levels of self-awareness, self-connection, and developing problem-solving skills. Resiliency is so key. It helps us to bounce back from failures and setbacks, enabling us to say, you know what, I'm going to take that bold leap of faith. I'm going to take that, that bold risk. You know, during life's journey, there's no doubt about it. We're going to face obstacles along the way. That is a guarantee. But I wanted to challenge us to discover how we can think of the obstacle actually being the way forward. How might the worst thing that could happen or have already happened become one of the best things that ever happened to you in your life? Or to me or to us, think about that. The obstacle is now the way forward, a very different way to approach things and look at things. I want to share with you the story of Pamela Pete Lasardi, um, just a beautiful woman that I had the opportunity to work for at Intel. Um, she hired me to be her tech program manager um, for the validation team that she led. She was a huge sponsor and mentor for me, but not just for me, really for the entire team. Um, over 27 years at Intel, she had helped a lot of people achieve their career goals. When I first joined the organization, um, Pete, as we affectionately called her, cast a vision for me of becoming a chief of staff and technical assistant to a C-suite officer at Intel. I had no idea what it was, but in, in my one-on-one -on -one with her, I'll never forget the day on March 31st, 2009, she said, Lakeisha, we believe you could become Intel's next rock star. And more importantly, we're gonna help you do that. She and a friend of mine, Carrie Karki, they both conspired to help me become a chief of staff and technical assistant. I tell you in that moment, I felt so seen, so validated, so supported, so loved, so appreciated um, that someone will come alongside of me and really help me to be successful. The next day was April 1st, 2009, a day also I will never forget. We actually got the news, very tragic news, that Pete had passed away. A very difficult time. I had moved from Florida to come work for this amazing woman. Uh, we were complete partners um, in validation. Um, I'm so grateful that in that moment, she began to see with me a vision for my future, a dream um, of what I could become at Intel. Um, and it was, you know, after that moment, I said, there is no way that I will not honor the legacy of what she saw, what she believed, what she hoped for me in terms of becoming a C-suite uh, chief of staff. And so, as I said earlier, I, I did achieve that goal. And I'm so grateful that Pete shared with me her vision for me. So the final antidote to fear is really around making bold decisions, um, making bold decisions um, fear proof. And so what am I going to say to that is it's time. It's time for us to be bold. The time is now. And how do you begin to make those bold decisions fear proof? The first thing you want to do is you want to educate yourself. You want to gather the data that you need to decide this is the right thing to do. Surround yourself with support. We talked about building that strong team X, team Lakeisha, your board of advisors, your board of directors. You want to seek diverse opinions, um, diverse perspectives. Take those risks, but experiment along the way that try, fill, adjust comes in over and over again, that you make sure um, you're moving towards success, but you're moving towards success with more information along the way. See yourself winning. Begin to visualize yourself successful, uh, and your team can help you with that. Take action and make sure that you commit to the journey. Those are my steps to making sure that as I make those bold decisions, it makes me feel comfortable with taking one step after the next along that journey to achieve my goal and whatever I put forth in front of me.